It's time for photo video trends for the month of September. It's all about Photokina. Don't miss out on our giveaway. We're giving away a speed ring. A speed ring you can use on a speed ring. It's yours. All you have to do is go over to thuslandlines.com and sign up. We also get this A6 and this softbox as well. But the speed ring, man. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Lars Lindstrom. And it's time for Photo Video Trends. September. September Photo Kina. Okay, let's do it, man. Yeah. There's so much going on. There's a lot going on. So Holy let's crank moly. through it. All right. What's the most exci exciting thing that you've seen in the last, the most exciting thing you've seen? Oh, I probably the most talked about for me in my world was either the uh, FS700 or the ingenue, new Ingenue lenses that are coming out. Oh, for your world. For my world, yeah. yeah. So the, let's start with the FS700. Okay. So it's, it's, for me, it wasn't super exciting. I was actually super bummed. It's like... Well, first you were excited about it, now you're bummed about it? No, I wasn't, I wasn't really excited about it. I was, I was anxious to see what they were going to do. You know, professional, larger format, not sensor, but camera, yeah. body. Um, and they just kind of missed the mark. And, and people, you know, like, here's the problem. You've got... The only advantage, in, I mean, there's a couple, but the main advantage over the C300 Mark II on the C700 is you have 60 frames a second in 4K and 120 frames a second in 2K. You do have that. You do have that. That's pretty nice. It's nice, you know, but there's, uh, like, every Sony camera does that and has for two years. You know what I mean? Well, specific ones do. Yeah. Yeah. But the pr here's the, the main issue is the price. And, and I feel like this is, like, I'm on repeat here for Canon stuff. It's just like, price, price, price. Like, they first announced the C300 Mark II at $16,000. Mistake, I bought one at $12,000. Yeah. And, and kind of begrudgingly, even. You know what I mean? It still like, feels, if it was in, in like, nine five nine thousand five hundred dollars Oh, they just, they couldn't oh, keep them on the shelves. Fly off the shelves. Because they're great cameras. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm using mine a ton right now, and I'm super happy with the images. It's not without its limitations. Uh, the crop mode at 120 frames a second, if you're in a pinch and need to, is not very great. It's just not super ideal. But um, the C700 came in with the eyepiece is $34,000. The eyepiece? So the eyepiece is $6,000. <laughs> okay. The camera with body the is, the camera body is $28,000. That is just out of range for, for what you're Why getting. Why would you not buy an Alexa at this point? Buy an Amira. Yeah, buy absolutely. An, literally, you can buy an Amira Premium 4K, maybe secondhand for that same price. Yeah. But a kit, you get like your cards, you get your cables, you get your eyepiece, you know, so it's like, and and I'm sorry, the image quality is superior. It just is. It's Amira. It's the yeah. same Alexa sensor. It's the same sensor that's won the last five Academy Awards, you know, so it's like, you can't compete with that on a price level. It's like, it's. I think you said, it's like going in to buy a Honda and having them ask you to pay BMW prices. Yeah, here, it'll be the same price as a BMW. He's like, well, why don't I just go get a BMW? Well, yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. There's there's some cool things about it. I'm you know it's got a 4.5K sensor. It's a stretched format. So uh, it's they're trying to, uh, you know, sell this camera to more cinema-minded people. Um, yeah. And eventually, <laughs> they'll have a software update that will allow anamorphic lenses. Yada yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a more professional camera. They're trying to compete in the Amira market. They are, but they they can't. The wrong price. It's the wrong price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Body should be twenty grand. Well, you know they'll drop at five thousand dollars in a matter of months of, or at yeah, least in a year. Yeah, their their eyepiece. I'm sure it's great, but you can't sell that eyepiece for the same cost as an Alexa or Amira eyepiece because that's airy. They've set the standard that is the industry standard. If you are pricing it the same as the industry standard, you're going to lose. You're just going to lose. Yeah. Price it at four and a half, price it at five, whatever. Just price it less than the industry <laughs> king. All right, moving on. Yeah, well, they think they are the king of the world. Uh, king. I know. I think they're, you know, sometimes. Not in the cinema market, though. No, they definitely are. not. Not going to make it in that yeah. kind of mode. All right. Well, thinking, talking about Canon, yeah. Canon has a mirrorless. It's an EOS five or M five. So they're they're, they're breaking they're into that mirrorless world. They're putting their toe in the water. You All know, right. nine hundred eighty dollars. Okay. All right. So okay. it's a start. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, no four K. No four K. No, no, yeah. definitely no four K. It's got a twenty four megapixel um, sensor. Okay. So cool. you know, that's it, great. It's probably a great little walk around camera. I, I'm looking at this kind of thing like, you know, and the specs are there's no four K, but you it wants to be the same as the A sixty three 
Oh yeah, Sony A6300. Yeah, I'll see a 6300. I'm like going, but but it's not. It's not. <laughs> but you know what? The one thing, the one advantage that Canon does have over Sony a lot of times is that the cameras are just a, a little easier to use. They just are. Menu They're, systems for sure. Yeah, menu yeah. systems or even your 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 uh, screen exposure and, triangle. Yeah. It's just like that's the thing. I just shot. Um, I helped my sister out, who's a photographer. Needed like her second dropped out last minute, and she needed a second. So I thought this will be fun. So I just like had a 5D again in my hands. I love They're those fun. cameras. Ugh. They're fun to shoot. Just fun, fun to shoot photos on. Yeah. But yeah. So this is probably Which, like the same image quality as like a T3i, yeah. T5i type thing, just mirrorless. Mirrorless. Yeah. APS-C sensor. But it's nine hundred eighty dollars. You know. I mean, if you want a little pocket camera to walk around with, that's going to give you a decent image. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's certainly a stock size image. You can use that shoot stock and. And be you know I I'd like to get my hands on one and play with one just, just play see with what it's one. like yeah. see what it's like which sure. we did do on the 5D Mark uh, Four we had think? one here you know what it, when I picked it up what was really nice about it is it really felt like the Mark Three the buttons okay. are kind of in the same places That's well they are in the same places thing. Yeah. they just are. Uh, the menus are a little different, a little mm -hmm. more simple in some ways. Um, a little bit more advanced in some ways. Yeah, I I liked the camera. I I liked it. I. I, I didn't get a chance to shoot a still shot with it. I'm doing that next Wednesday. We're gonna do a big shoot or next Monday. Big shoot yeah. with it. Next okay, Monday. a big shoot. Great. Yep. So Are you gonna get something some? where it can really, um, you know, I, I can't decide. Uh, uh, Kenneth and I did a complete head-to-head -head comparison between the uh, A7R2 yeah. and the Mark IV, and boy, it was push and pull, push and pull. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I'm Better here, not so great there. And well, the the 4K video, which they fly, Canon's finally doing 4K video on this thing, right? But it's 1.73 crop. 1.73 crop. Something like that. 1.73 yeah. crop. Well, it's super, or super like that. 35, isn't it? It's uh, it's it's actually more crop than super 35. Is it? Super 35 is 1.6. Yeah. So this is this is starting to get closer into like micro four thirds. Oh. Uh, so so suddenly you know you got to start throwing 16 to 35 on there. Yeah. If you want to get anything. Like any kind of like, wide angle. So. So yeah, and the 4K. bottom line was that I think the, the A7R2 is still still kind of whipping it a little bit. Still king. Yeah. It's but just if you're doing weddings, yeah. You know, you may want to consider that as a wedding type shooting camera. You know, if you're going to shoot for stills, for stills or video? absolutely for stills. Oh, for stills. It's too. a 30 megapixel awesome. uh, 30 megapixel sensor, so you really got a great uh, sensor there. Yeah. And I think that uh, that in and of itself makes it great. If you're going to do it for video for for weddings. You know, I don't know. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's that crop a, it's a, thing. The it's crop, a crop thing's thing just, a, just bummer, a bummer, man. So 16 to 35 becomes like a 24 to 70, essentially. But I just think they're protecting their 1DC market, and they don't want to... And I don't know why. Get rid of the 1DC. Uh, no, the know? 1DC's fine. There's people that, that will step up. But it's like, there's still... There's something to be said about their, tech, their sensor technology. So Sony created their sensor technology so that it could downsample, and you could still use the full 4K... Uh, full frame sensor. Canon did their technology a little bit differently, so it makes it difficult to do that. So you actually have to crop in to get the 4K on the 1.73, so it doesn't it doesn't down sample. In so camera. what are they doing on the 1DC? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that's different. I don't know how c they can do it on the 1DC and somehow they can't do it on the 5D. Yeah. But maybe you're right. Maybe they're just trying to protect. And like that was a thing for the longest time is that didn't want to. Is like their their C300 Mark II 4K cinema camera. They didn't want that to compete with their DSLR yeah. line. But the problem is right there in that sentence. Yeah. Their DSLR line. It's like <laughs> that's a totally different world. Just give the people what they want, man. It's just I don't I don't understand it. And I, yeah. I, there, if Sony didn't have a couple of just just flaws in their in the EVF and the viewfinding screen, the ease of use, mm -hmm. then I think the one uh, the uh, A7R2 would have just completely annihilated them. But yeah, it kind of has. Yeah, it kind of it kind of has. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another yeah. one. Here's a Sony A99 II. Okay, so the DSLR. It's a factor DSLR form, yeah. from Sony, and it's thirty two hundred dollars. So it's in that exact uh -huh. same price yep. range. Full frame sen same sensor Full frame as the sensor. A7R2. Yep. <clears throat> Forty megapixels, full frame. Got it's really, I mean, it's an incredible specs on it. It does 120 frames per second. Um, shooting video at shooting 4K. Shooting video at 4K. That's I mean, 4K, 120, frame, 120 frames a second, 4K video. Motion is 60. It can't wow. be 120. It's got to be 120 frames a second at 1080p. Because it if it does it at 4K video, man. That's yeah. 200. It, as well as slow motion, at, at yeah. uh, it doesn't say here in the specs, but I would, I would be curious to know There's, that that has to be. Yeah, it has 1080, to be. Because if it does 120 frames at 4K, man, they just stepped it up. Yeah. 
Well, uh, people are saying online that you know this is the camera that uh, that everyone wants. They want the one or the Mark IV to be. This yeah. is the camera, you know. But the biggest drawback on this is that you can't put a Metabones on it. You can't adapt it to anything other than Sony lenses. Right, and that's not something that Sony did intentionally. It's just any time you you have a single lens reflex camera where the mirror is popping up, your sensor has to be set back like almost an inch. And then if you put another there. inch of adapters on there, you just you, your lenses won't work. Your your focal length's going to be all off, and you're going to start getting lots of weird vignetting and stuff. So, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. You can only so. use Sony mount A mount lenses. But what is interesting, if you had Sony lenses and you are, you're, if Sony was your world, you got the A7R II. These two have the same sensor. Uh, sensor. They'll match you know? up so perfectly. this could be the camera that does your your uh, you know slow motion. That and, and cuts with the A7R II. The, I still like looking through and seeing the real world through glass rather than pixels. Yeah. It's like so when I'm when I'm shooting weddings, like I just can't stand the shooting on an A7S. I just can't stand it. <laughs> even even if now I've turned off my preview in picture, mm -hmm. so it's just like it's refreshing immediately. Mm -hmm. There's still something about it I just don't enjoy as much. So I don't know. This uh, it'll well, be a great camera. Well, be interesting to see how this that, compares. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. it'd be really fun to look at. Yeah, I'd love to play with one. Yeah, cool. This is exciting. This next one. Yeah, Fujifilm. Fujifilm, the GFX 50S. I think it's the 50S. There we go. The GF GFX 50S. Yeah. Even better. Much better than that 50S. Yeah. Oh yeah. Forget yeah. about that. 50S. That's yeah. like 2014. Yeah. Technology. Way 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 back there. So. Yeah. The 50S. So this is a medium format Fujifilm camera. And they've they've developed their own uh, lens system for it, and it just I, I think it's going to be really cool because they're they're going head to head now with that new Hasselblad, with the Hasselblad that yeah. ten thousand dollar Hasselblad <laughs> camera. So and what they, price range is this? They in? did they haven't announced price range. They did say it will be v well under the Hasselblad. It has to be. Oh It yeah. has to go on the six thousand dollar range, or maybe four, four or five. You think four or five? I want it wow, to be so Wow, a medium bad. format. With that kind of megapixel, yeah. that would be pretty stunning. See, the thing, the problem with it is that they developed their own lens system for it. So you yeah. have, now you're going, okay, so, I mean, really, once you get, like, two or three lenses for it, yeah, yeah, it'll you're be up there. It. It's not going to be cheap, for sure, but people really like these Fujifilm cameras. I mean, we've got the X-T2 that people really enjoy. The X-T1 kind of launched that. But it's a, they, they have, like, this really kind of unique like street photography kind of vibe where they're a little bit more punchy the, the images are kind of i mean they've got this nice teal and the blues that people enjoy and and i, I mean i really like the images that come off of those cameras so it'll be interesting to see this yeah, medium format this is a fab, i mean a, a medium format that you can carry around with you throw in a backpack that's and, the thing and go out because and it's do, mirror it's yeah, mirrorless it's incredible so it's the size of like a traditional 35 yeah. millimeter camera but you have a massive medium format sensor in there so that's just i mean it says they have formats four three Three two one one four five six seven six seventeen. <laughs> got it all. Yeah, I got all the formats. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. <laughs> Camera's It'll gonna be, be huge. <laughs> it would be fun to yeah. test and yeah. just see what's And Canon's going. gonna pay for it. <laughs> Wonder who he's parodying right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's pretty cool. It'd be great to do. That'd be a great camera test. Do that and the uh, the Hasselblad. Yeah. That would be fabulous. Yeah, back to back. I mean, you wouldn't expect it to beat the Hasselblad, but if it just stayed in the game, you know, just, just if it was like Rocky, the race, it, it just man. take the punches to the right, end. Right. And right. And then and you just you just wear them out, right? Yeah. Just wear them out. <laughs> that's okay. We can buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> and just wear them <laughs> out. Keep punching. <laughs> so. All right. You want to okay. tackle this next one? Yes, I All think right, this great. next one is fabulous. Yeah. I do not own a helicopter. A, I want a helicopter. Drone, quadcopter. I, I'm sorry, quad, I don't own a helicopter either. <laughs> <laughs> or a drone. Come on, give it the time. Dang, oh, everybody's got a helicopter. helicopter. So bad. <laughs> but no, the Karma drone. Karma? Yeah, the, the Karma, Karma drone. It from GoPro is yeah. fabulous. It's It collapses. It's got the gimbal Backpack. out front. So that you don't get the copter blades inside. That and to me was so cool, it's man. So smart. It's like a whole kit, though. Yeah. It's got a handheld gimbal as well. Yeah, you just it's pop just right off. Pops off. It's yeah. just a great kit, and it's like seven hundred. It's eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred bucks. Goes in a small backpack because the blades collapse. Ugh. It's just you know, go. I think they've done a really smart thing, and you put their camera on it. Right. Know? So and and speaking of GoPro cameras, they got the Hero Five Black and the Hero Five Session. Priced correctly. Yeah, finally. <laughs> well, well they, I think they learned their lesson. They had a they had a bit of a, a sour point with their cube camera or whatever. Yeah. But so 400 bucks for the the Hero Five Black. So 
4K, oh, 4K looks more much more cinematic. Um, the the voice the voice tech. Uh, have you seen the voice simulation? No. So you can say GoPro, uh, go to video mode, and it'll switch to video it? mode. Right. So so rather than trying to fumble through these menus, they have a little They're touch. So crummy. I they hate have a menus. touch screen on the back now. Oh, do they? Yeah. So you can like you can see your image. You can like cycle <laughs> through. You can touch screen. You can go to photo and video and 4K video or slow motion, and it's just all touch screen. See, so. I've been complaining about that forever. I oh, don't know for how sure. they pulled this off in the beginning. Right. We're going to give you a camera, but you don't get to see what you shoot. Also, <laughs> you like, have no clue how to navigate the menu because no. you got a, a shoot button on top and a little power yeah. button on the bottom, and you got to somehow toggle those and make something happen. So, so we got yeah. a much better system. For, oh, oh that's they're going to sell a million of these things, and and it's gonna it's gonna save the company. Yeah. Does that company need to be saved? I think so. They really? they were they had to lay off like ten percent of their employees because they made this big marketing thing and they priced this camera too high and yeah. and it hurt them a lot. But this is cool. Now an eight hundred dollar drone and you get this like four hundred dollar GoPro five and the the video. Have you seen the video? Yes, I watched some of the video today. It was good. It does oh. clip a little bit. I was looking at some. It clips a little. But but it's 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 um, like that video like the the drone video was insanely good. Yeah, it's fabulous. So you're yeah. looking at the same price as like a Phantom 5, is that what it is? Yeah, Phantom, Phantom 4. Phantom 4, 4 is $1,200. Yeah. $1, so, so, so you're in that for the it camera. It is the exact the, same price. Well, you know they did that to compete there. Oh, they had Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you think if we got a Phantom 4 uh -huh. and we did a little comparison uh, with this oh. setup here? See, here's the thing. The Phantom 4 has got more like you have follow technology. You've got some really cool tools to keep the, the actual drone safe. Um, that I don't know. You don't have any of that on this one. I don't know that GoPro did any of that. However, the camera quality, the image quality, is superior. I believe. So the Hero Five, it's got to be. If they yeah. if they stepped up the Zero Five and they got the Four yeah. K and it isn't a step forward, then they've got a problem. But yeah. Well, I I'm kind of excited about this. Yeah, you should I've get never one. Owned, I've never owned a drone. I'm ready. They're so I cool. Absolutely I absolutely need one. You know, I just bought the DJI Inspire Pro. And it does because it does, does 4K and it's got a better compression rate and so and it's got interchangeable lenses so you can put a micro four thirds lens on there and actually get some decent glass and lens flares and blah blah blah. But so I'm I'm very excited. I'm trying that out for the first time this weekend. We're doing like a little pilot travel show type thing up to Lake Tahoe and there's some like nice. So we're you know are people, you flying it or do you have somebody else flying it? I'm gonna fly it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm gonna practice tomorrow. Yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm nervous about it. So, no, that's yeah. the last thing you want. And there it goes into the lake. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Lars was not ready for that. He made a left turn when it should that have been right. That was a $2,500 mistake. $3,000 mistake. So, but anyway. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, last thing on here, that, uh, and I'm sure there's a million other things, but yeah. Sigma has their new cine lenses. Everybody has Every, cine lenses. Everybody does. So, Tokina's got their cinema lenses coming out. They're, they're but these are lenses. reasonably priced cinema lenses. These are not like, yeah. I guess. I well, mean, every, I mean, so the thing, here's what's, what started it all, is that Geo Optics, a Chinese company, took the Sigma 18-35 and they rehoused it. And they sold a ton of them. Yeah. I bought one. My buddy bought one. His buddy bought one. Like, everybody got this thing. And it was like $3,500. You know what I mean? So, for a $600 lens. Yeah. And so, they started going, hmm. Well, maybe, and everybody started doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So why now, don't we just make this lens? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so everybody that makes lenses, still frame lenses, is now stepping and into just that rehousing them into the rehousing them. So Sigma, Tokina, um, gosh, there were a million announcements about it. But uh, yeah, everybody's doing it. So we got the eighteen to thirty-five, fifty to one hundred. Yep. You know, 24, 35 later. So uh -huh. I, just a great set of, and they got a whole set of primes, primes 20, 24, up. 35, 50, 85, everything you expect. So, so far, so. No, no prices for them. You know, that, that will remain, as, that, that's the issue. Although Sigma, I think they know, they know where they have to be, I hope, in yeah. there to make it work. I just hope they price them the same as the Zine cinema yeah. lenses because those, nobody really liked that glass. I mean, the, for the Rokinon lenses, I don't think anybody but really enjoyed it. But it was reasonably it. Priced. priced. Oh, totally. That's why like everyone, a cinema, uh, de yeah. clicked, whatever. But um, but the you know you can't charge twenty five hundred bucks for a cinema lens. It's like not really that great because then you might as well just get something like a CP two. Yeah, you should step up. Then so at that point. so this is. I'm very curious to see how they price these. Yeah. So but the Ingenue lens that I mentioned, I never really got into. Oh, that's so, right. So so you know how the Metabones has the speed booster adapter. Mm -hmm. 
and you turn like a, like a micro four thirds into a super 35 and you get an extra stop of light and more sharpness. It's like, the, like it's magic, pure magic. Yeah. Well, Anjanu has uh, built a factory in Japan and just has developed a couple of these lenses with this built into it. So you can take, you can put it on, you can put like a Super 35 lens on a full frame red camera, you know, like these helium sensor cameras, yeah. these 8K sensor Vista Vision, and you get an f2.0 on ingenue glass that's just like, I mean, it's like a dream come true. And I, one of the focal ranges for the uh, full frame sensor was 22 to 60, something like that. So super usable focal range and an F2 with ingenue glass. I mean, it's going to be for like, and they pr they're pricing but it at $10,000. This is for the set? No, this for is for one? One lens. But that you have to understand, ingenue glass, that doesn't exist. It do, like that's amazing for an ingenue zoom. Ten thousand dollars. But that's insane. You know how good that is? Ingenue zooms go for forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. And everybody okay. like that is the professional market. That's yeah. what they use. And so for ten thousand dollars for that kind of focal range on like a red helium sensor, that's like that's game changer for a lot of these guys. It's, I'm very excited about it, clearly. So when are they set to release? What's the... Uh, early or? next year. Early next year? I think so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or the uh, fourth quarter of this year. Uh, I can't yeah. remember now. But they're going to sell a lot of them. Good That's for them. fabulous. Yep. All right. Well, I just wanted to say here, uh, one of the things are the uh, the uh, Baja A6 finally hit B&H. Oh, yeah. It's finally in B&H. It took it a little while to get that up and get going, but it is there now. We certainly have our giveaway still going. Mm. So if you want to win an A6, an A6... <laughs> If you want to win a, a Baja A6, uh, with also the uh, Dynalite has a great parabolic uh, modifier that they're giving away with that kit. So it's like cool. a $1,000 kit. Uh, just really very cool. So you can check that out on our webpage, thesunlens.com. And also go to B&H. You can find them there. Cool. Awesome. awesome. So SanDisk came out with a one terabyte SD card. I saw that. One terabyte. That's crazy. You know what terrifies that, me about that? You is go, oh, I can shoot for a week. Exactly. <laughs> and so you shoot and for a week. And then something happens. <laughs> and then and you take your card out and the wind picks up. <laughs> and your SD card and the week's worth of shooting. Eagle goes, sweeps yeah. in and yeah, it takes exactly. out your hands. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, I had I had a bummer. I was, I was shooting this Anthem commercial for a massive dairy farm this last week in Idaho. And um, beautiful stuff. It was the sunset, so it was time sensitive, and we were getting all these really beautiful shots of these massive tractors and these silhouettes and these lens flares, and I was really excited about it. And then I went to roll on my C300 Mark II, and I had a, a Lexar 256 gig CFast um, 3400X card in there. Which is an expensive card. We're Six, $600, $600 card, right. 600 bucks. Uh, 700 when it, when it first came Wait, out. Yeah. So I had this, you know, I'm. I'm we're going, we're going. I've got maybe 20 shots, maybe 30 shots of, of very time sensitive material here. And all of a sudden I go to roll and it says, buffer error, uh, check your card. And suddenly the camera freezes, the OS freezes, uh. and it totally shuts down. We put the card in the computer and it, it freezes the OS on my computer. Uh. It crashed the computer. I mean, my, my DIT was just doing all sorts of things, had to restart, we, we cleaned the card up in disk utility. Finally, we were able to salvage some of the images. Oh, some, so you did some get some of the off clips. Of I did, but when I put that card back into my camera and formatted, it will not work, it corrupts. So the whole card is corrupted. So my problem was, I was, you know, I was trying to figure out what was going on. I found out a lot of other people on the C300 Mark II have had this issue on the 3400X line of Lexar. So I got on customer support with Lexar and I was trying to figure out if they would replace my card with the new 3500X line because that is officially supported now uh, technically with Canon's uh, C300 Mark II. Even though their website said the 3400X would work with Weird. Canon, they didn't specifically say the Canon uh, C. But I'm going, how many what other, other C-Fast yeah, cameras? What other cameras are there? There's only one, you guys. <laughs> So anyway, so they will not send me a 3500X line card. They will only replace with the 3400X, which multiple people have had problems with. And that's like, I might as well that's throw worthless. that $600 piece of plastic on the ground. Who's going to buy it? No, like maybe a, a Blackmagic a, yeah, gonna camera to user. Line, but. but like that's the only, right now, that seems to be because uh, Aerie won't support it on their, um, on their Amira. And now Canon is just worthless. So... Yeah. If, if any of you know have any connections to Lexar, have them get in contact with me, man. This have them call Lars. He's waiting by me. his phone for the call. 
I am. I'm super bummed because it's like, look, at six hundred to seven hundred dollars for a card, That's you a... need reliability. And if you don't have reliability, that company has got to do something. When they come out with a new card that is reliable, they say, you know what, you're right, you've had a problem with that, here's the new one that's going to work with your camera. Don't give me a card that's known to have issues and that's going to break again. That's worthless to me. The only acceptable thing, the mm -hmm. only acceptable thing to do is like a recall. We are so sorry, this card does not work on the C300. It will give you problems. If you bought one for your C300, we will replace it. With a 3500X model that's going to yes. work, that is compatible. The fact that they're not, and that I've been on customer support with them several times now, is insane to me. Well, it means the executives are going, you know what, let's just kind of sweep it under the carpet, let's kind of move on. Yeah, discontinue you know? that one real fast because yeah, it, it's had problems on. and doesn't work. Let's come out with this new one that does work and let's just like leave these guys Even, that paid six, seven hundred dollars uh, for these cards in the dust. That's wrong. This kind of stuff drives me nuts because yeah. they should at least, at least the people who call in and say I have a problem, replace those. No I problem. think they should go a step further and they should just put out a general word saying, look, if you got this card and you have a C300, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. We don't want you to have problems. Yeah. And we want to, and you know, the integrity of our company is important to us, and so we're going to take yeah. care of it. But the fact that on their website it said the 3400X is compatible with Canon cameras, like it doesn't specifically say the C300 Mark II like the new line does, but because it says that, and the only Canon camera <laughs> that had CFast at that time was the, was the C300 Mark II, you've got to own up yeah. to your mistakes. Absolutely. Unreal. So here's my here's my conundrum of the day. Ooh. Not an enigma, okay. All right. but a conundrum. Thank goodness. So I have an A7R2. Uh -huh. I have an A7S. Uh -huh. I have two Atmos recorders, uh -huh. a Ninja and a Flame. Uh -huh. I need to get two matching sensors. You throw those away and you get two C300 Mark IIs. <laughs> Eh, wrong answer. <laughs> I do not have $24,000 to invest in uh, this product. Come on, you're JP Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Roast. <laughs> Roast. <laughs> so, what would be my least, least expensive solution to that? I thought the least ex uh, expensive solution would buy just a, uh, online by an A7S. Uh -huh. Used. Yeah. Now yeah. I've, got the, I've got two 4K systems. I think the the Ninja and the um, Flame should match well enough. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they really should. And as long as your settings and camera are, are perfectly matched, then yeah, absolutely. And because you're recording in the Ninja Flame, you're getting a 4K422 file. Yeah. So you you'll have a, if there is some minor tweaks that need to be made in post, you can much make those easier tweaks. to do. Right. So that's the easiest. The next step up would be A7R2. I buy another A7R2. Uh -huh. um, I also thought, well, maybe another solution would be an A7S2. So now, no. but they don't match. No, they don't match. Which uh, kills me. I wish they matched. I wish the A7S2 would match the A7R2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just can't expect a 12 megapixel on a 40 megapixel <laughs> sensor to downsample somehow. To <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, obviously, they're going to so be very serious. similar. So, what if I did buy a C300, which I'm seriously considering? Mm -hmm. Can I? Either of those, can the A7R2 be a B camera to the C? I mean, obviously, it's just, it's, it's, it's about shooting. Different. You're going to have to shoot, at that point, flat yeah. picture profile, which is your favorite thing. Uh, you know what? On the A7R2, I don't mind it as much because it has an 800 ISO, Perfect. Uh, which is so much easier to deal with than the yeah. 3200 yeah. that uh, the A7S has. Yeah. So that that I could get away with. And plus, the new flame, I can put a... I can put what? a rec a LED on there and I can yeah, look at it, so it's a, a lot yeah. easier for me to deal That's with. Very nice, very yeah. very nice. And don't throw away your uh, variable ND filters and get some some like a 1.8. I, I would get a ND six, mm -hmm. so a two stop filter, a four stop, and a six stop. I would just have those. Okay. As and and just like change them out as the situation changes. If you know you're going outside and it's sunny, throw that six throw stop there, or, or get, get an eight there. stop even, yeah. and throw it in there. But yeah, so. If you're shooting log C, mm -hmm. or I guess it would be log S. It's S, -log. it's S log for Sony, yeah. If you're shooting S log on the Sony and you're shooting C log on the Canon, then if you've if you've got someone that knows kind of a little bit how to match things in post, then yeah, yeah you can get those to match, yeah. no problem. So if you have the C300 and uh -huh. you want to use a B camera, is there any economical solution out there for a B camera that will cut with a C300? Maybe the C100 Mark II. But that's still you're in a four thousand yeah four thousand dollar range. So you know you're sixteen thousand for two cameras and 
You've got That's all the cannon lenses. Was well, in the beginning. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think I think those would match pretty well. You know, you, the problem yeah. with the C100 Mark II is that you do have C-Log, but you do not have the ability to throw a LUT on top. So you have to, you'd still have to use your Atmos recorder. Even if you weren't recording onto it, it at the very least. Um, oh, but you know what? You don't have 4K on the C100 Mark II. No, you don't. I don't have to have 4K. Yeah, but the ability is there and nice. I really want to get it into two cameras, and I just need to buy two C300s, and that's... It's a bummer. It's a bummer because it's so expensive. It's so expensive. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, $24,000 into that, you know? I like the idea, though. You buy one, mm -hmm. and the, on the off chance that you do need two cameras, you just rent mine or Kenneth's. Yeah, that's really... And it's just like, because that's what we're... Kenneth and I are doing that all the time now, and it's actually really great. You just rent from our, each other? Our friendship has grown. <laughs> since because we see each other more often now that we work for each other trading cameras all the time yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put money into his PayPal and he puts money into mine and it's a zero-sum game yeah there you have it <laughs> at the end we've made no money <laughs> and somehow we're paying taxes on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. the best part <laughs> right all right so there was my problem of the day cool. the conundrum of the day uh, I'm not sure I'm exactly sure what I'm gonna do but Anyway, it was fun to talk about. It was fun. So there you have it. Photo video trends for the month of September. Thanks for watching. Yep. Check out our podcast. Pop podcast. Pop podcast. You got it. You got it the first time. Podcast. Yep. <laughs> Sing in there. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the podcast. Give us a listen there and uh, maybe listen to this on the way to your uh, next commute to work. Don't forget, you can purchase any of the products that we've talked about here today through our affiliate links. It keeps our show on air and keeps us going, so check those out through our affiliate links. Yeah, man. If anything we talked about today just piqued your interest a little bit, then uh, click on our affiliate link pro little bars thing down there at the Somewhere bottom. down there on the bottom. And, uh, and go buy something, man. Have some fun. There you go. Yeah. Get that helicopter. Yeah, oh, quadcopter. <laughs> Definitely. So, and also, we have a Facebook group. Join our Facebook group. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff going on there. That group is growing all the time and a great place to post images, talk about things that are going in photography. So, check it out. The Slam Lens Facebook group. group. Yeah, also the podcast. Yep. Give it a listen on your way to work next time. It's a great podcast. All right, so keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. If you have ever been interested in stop motion photography, then I've got the perfect thing for you. Trisha Zemp teamed up with us to create a download called Stop Motion Basics for Beginners. Get over to theslendlens.com. Get your download today, it will answer all your questions. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Lars Lindstrom. And it's time for questions and answers. From you guys. From you ah. guys. So, going to the amazing Flamingo mailbox. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let's all look right. through these as fast as possible. From Twitter. All right, so, for Rose Khan, for amateur to semi-professional filmmakers, movies, do cine lenses really make much of a difference to the end result, mm. especially considering how good raw footage can be Processed with robust software. These Has days. nothing to do with raw footage. No. Has everything to do with ease of use. Ease of use and breathing. So yeah. breathing is actually so. There's a lot of these like still lens companies that are switching over to now cinema lenses like Sigma and Tokina and blah blah blah. The problem is the the way the lens when you focus them. If you notice on still lenses, the the edges move in and out. They breathe. And that's okay on still lenses because you hit one focal po point and then you can take a photo. Yeah. But on cinema lenses, the elements are moving within the lens as you focus them to make sure that the edges stay perfectly the same. And that's where most of the money is going to come into play. So, um, yeah, there's other advantages. You have a farther focus throw. You have ramped iris. But, um, but that is by far the most expensive part of a cinema lens. Very good. So, yeah. Okay. Sean Brasner said, since you're on YouTube, what are your thoughts on the recent monetization censorship issue? Have you heard about this? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, do you think it might be eventually, uh, do, you might, do you think it might eventually extend to negative reviews about bad productions? Well, that's an interesting thought. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. You know, anytime, I, I think it's just scary. Anytime one of these platforms makes a big adjustment, hmm. you know, you just, people invest so much time and energy into creating a social media, you know, connection, and then all of a sudden they just, some exhort, you know, executive makes a decision and throws everything into a tailspin. Here's, here's what I think needs to happen. I think it, it should be up to the advertisers to say whether or not they're okay with risque content on the channel. So, so if it's a Huggies commercial, 
that wants to roll before, maybe F words aren't necessarily like yeah. a great thing to have in that video. And the advertiser can say, we don't want language or sexual, yeah, like they whatever. They can make a decision. Right. But if it's a beer commercial, if it's an edgy commercial as is, if it's freaking, what's that company that has the pooping unicorn? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a squatty potty. Squatty potty. If it's squatty potty, they should be able to put that on whatever they want because it's like that's the content, you know, the commercial. So I think it should be up to the advertisers to say, we don't think that inappropriate content's the right place for our spot. That's what I think should happen. Well, it goes both ways, though. I mean, with us having uh, our channel and pre-roll on there, huh. there's some things maybe we don't want on there. You know, there may maybe, be, yeah. And maybe as a as a you know person who's on Facebook, maybe you should be able to do the same the other way. Say, you know what, we don't want these kind of content. Or, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, commercials are pretty tame. They are. They you know are I mean? pretty pretty under control. I love, yeah. Except for Squatty Potty. That is out of control. That <laughs> it's is, hilarious. That so. is out of control. Oh, it's funny. I love it pre-rolling on this little thing here. But, uh, but yeah, so I think, uh, is it going to upset the thing? Not if it hurts YouTube and eventually makes them lose money. So that's, it's all about money. They're going to do whatever makes them the most money. And if it's going to hurt them, if their users are now going to be turned off and switch over to different platforms, then YouTube's going to do something about it. But yeah, I think give the advertiser the ability to choose whether or not they're okay with whatever kind of content. Yeah. Okay, we better go on. Yep. Jerry Richard, what camcorders would you recommend for something like Fashion Week? I already shoot st uh, shows in Dallas, but I want to add video to my work. So camcorders. Well, you. I mean, if you if you shoot stills, then you're obviously into the DSLR world. If you're in the DSLR world, you have video capabilities. Start with that. Figure out how that works with the exposure triangle, and then if you want to step up into like a like a C300, C100, FS7, FS5, then you can have that conversation. But figure out video first on your DSLR. It's cheap and it looks great. Absolutely. And if your issue is you're going to run it and just want it to run, keep running. You know, your DSLR does have a disadvantage. You're going to have to stop and start it every so often. But sure. it's a great place to start and just see. And you'll get great footage. It'll look excellent. Yeah. Aaron Cornea. Cornea. I Cornea, said, there you yeah. go. Said, uh, Tether Tools, uh, new wireless transmitter. I've seen this. I'm Com very excited compar about it. Comparable to the Cam Ranger. You know, I have not compared them. I am not sure how these two will compare with one another, but it would be a great comparison to look at. All right, because I didn't understand any of that. It's all wireless transmission so that you can wirelessly send the images to an iPad so an art director can look at your images oh, cool. while you're shooting. You yeah. know, there's a lot of different applications. So all right. yeah, I would guess look. the Tether Tools, because they do things really well, I would guess it, it competes and will be in the same range as the Cam Ranger. Uh, I'm hoping even a little better. Cool. So. All right. Okay, stop motion video. Uh, Miss Fisher. Mishy Pishy. There we go. Any suggestions you have for inexpensive lighting to set up not, uh, stop motion with kids? You know what? If you want really inexpensive lights and something that we've been, I've used a few times because we had them here and absolutely loved them, was these little kit by Savage. Yeah! These little lights are LED fabulous. kit by Savage with the modifiable fronts. Yeah. And, yeah, it's like 500 I mean, bucks for a three light, three like lights. Two, two or three light kit. And just for simple things, yeah. you know, you might find out with kids, um, it might be a little slow, might not have a, but you're doing stop motion. I would start with that Savage kit and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know how much I love the uh, Roscoe lights, but they're pretty expensive. But if you can get into that world, it's not your less expensive ex solution, but it's your last year of the lifetime solution. So. Totally. Uh, Unity is a must said, what size is the small Octobox? It's like 24 it's inches? A, Around 24 inches. 18 it's, to 24. Yeah. Or something. No, it's not 18. It's okay. more. It's more in the 20 to 20, maybe 22 inches. Oh, okay. So it's pretty small. Yeah. It's a small footprint. Gives a nice look in the eye. You know, with getting nice and of, close. I mean, yep. it's, it's kind of something you want more power out of. It feels more like a beauty dish because the light is a little harder uh -huh. uh, than you're going to get in a I huge. Like that. It, yeah, it's a great yeah, look. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Camera movement. How to stop? How to, how to create emotion? This one still does really, we, does really well. You and I yeah. did this forever ago. Oh, yeah. All the different angles yeah, 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 still yeah, yeah, does yeah. extremely well. Awesome. Cool. Alexandros Margo said. So, great tutorial. I find the big issue with all movement is keeping the subject in, fo in focus, especially when with Glidecam. Mm. Uh, do you always have, have someone to operate and follow focus? Wire? Firstly, no. with Glidecam, I see Lars do it, and he's much better than I am by but he always gets it on a pretty wide app or a pretty good aperture. Yeah, see the thing about glide cam is you're on a wide lens first of all, right? So you're on like a 21, 16, something like that, depending on what uh, uh, sensor you have. And then I do, if I'm on glide cam, 
nobody's pulling focus for me, right? There's no way like, it's going to work. It's too heavy if you throw a wireless follow focus on there and it's expensive. So I do a deeper aperture, maybe a 5.6, 8.0, something like that. And then I, I usually plan my shot out in advance. I know that if I'm starting at 30 feet and I end up at 2 feet, that's an issue for me. And I'm not going to be able to do that. So I might maybe take ND off or bump my ISO so I can do an F16 and just try to hold that focal range as much as possible. Um, but if I know that I'm going to be circling someone or if I'm doing like a six feet to three feet, I'm going to be able to hold that and I'll do like a four and a half feet on my lens before I make the move. And so you're, you're kind of by walk, you're focusing with your feet. You're not walking in too far and not, you know, you're getting that optimal yeah. place. You just got to find it. Do, if you can, rehearse it before and figure out where your focal plane has to be with your f-stop. Um, but yeah, you should be good. Four reasons you need tungsten light. This is from... Uh, Valtz... This is one is really difficult. It's not our fault this time. Why wouldn't you just give us foot candles or lux instead of a random stop reading? Hmm. Well, for me, it's not a random stop reading. I take a meter reading at six foot from the light, and I give you what f-stop that is at, I believe, 800 ISO. I can't remember, eight or 600. We yeah. have our test grid. That's what I do. That's what you get here, and you're gonna, it's going to be consistent. That's what we do. Emilio uh, Melenda said, what generator do you use to power the smoke machine? We're using those little uh, Honda. Not so little. Well, there we have the big Honda. The uh -huh. smoke, the smoke gen You cannot, you cannot run those smoke machines on the small Honda generator no, that we have. The 10 amp or 20 amp generators. Yeah, you've got to get a larger generator. So Depen either it's it a 4800 the, or yeah, there's a 6500. 6500. Yeah. So, so it depends. There, there are 10 amp fog machines that will work on those small, the the 20 amp, the Honda 2000 generators, um, but the. Even though they say they're 20 amps, they're not 20 amps. They're like more like 16 amps. Yeah. So you have to be kind of careful about that. So it's not going to your your 1200 HMIs might work. Your M18 certainly not gonna. No. So and and fog machines because they have like massive coil and heaters in there like to to get the fog yeah. machine to that that uh, point of making smoke. They take a lot of power. Yeah. Yeah. I love this next one. Trends from how do you say her name? Uh. Oh man. It's feel. Filmuj Mini. And she says, too long, too boring. And what are these trends anyway? <laughs> boring, boring, and boring. Well, thank you. What are these trends? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll try to be more and more boring in the future. What are these, people? What are these? <laughs> we're just, you know, we're just here having fun. We enjoy what we do. We do this for you guys. We do this for us because it's just we enjoy it. But... If, you know, if you're not finding value in this or if it's not fun for you, then that's fine. You can go somewhere else. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sammy G. Art said, uh, great work. Thank you, guys. I rarely hear you talk about the GH4. Are you guys not fond of them? Uh, as, you have, uh, as you may have guessed, I have one. Um, I don't think it's the best in the world, but good for what I do. Just wanted to hear what you guys think about it. So, yeah. You know, it's a great camera. It's a great camera, certainly for, for the price point, for what it does. It's awesome. I just am a huge fan of being able to create a shallow depth of field when I want to, and, and having a larger sensor helps me to do that. Um, otherwise, GH4 is awesome. If you're doing aerial cinematography, it's like the king of it cameras. It is. But, um, but yeah. So everyone's going to be wondering why we didn't talk about the GH5, GH5 today, I which know. we didn't. Which we didn't. We missed that one. Yeah. But yeah, 422, 4K at 60 frames a second. It's like a camera where they gave us what we wanted. Yeah. So Pretty amazing, but still on that same sensor. Yep, totally. So, but you know what? From a price point, and a lot of people use Andy uses it. Yeah. GH4, he yeah. loves his. So yeah. he's got Very a. Cool man. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. Anyway, going on here. Cool. All right, I can't say any of these names. Prashant Kumar. There you go. Hi, can you just advise me which portrait lens I should use for outdoor shoots? Which one would be the best lens? Best lens. You know, if if I'm shooting outside and I have to make this decision, there's no doubt about it. I don't use primes as much as Lars does. I would do the 70 to 200. And me too. And I use primes all the time. It's just a, it's a go-to lens if you're outside and you want that background to go nice and out of focus and you just want to have beautiful images. 70 to 200. That range is beautiful. Yep. Love the it. The Tamron 70 to 200 is a great lens and it's a great price point. Cool. Uh, Chet Arthur said, um, JP, how do you light your set so that the audience never sees the reflection of the lights in your glasses? How do you do that? I don't think you do it intentionally, do you? Well, we've got this over enough to the side that yeah. if I was in your place, we'd have more of a problem. Sure, because you'd be looking over I'd this looking, way. Looking towards was you. That a, was that a conscious thing yeah. then, putting it, it over to, on that light side? Light had to be on this side for me and my glasses, sure. Wow. See, I didn't know that. 
There you go. Yep. Just be conscious where your key is. Yep. And, uh, if you get it around yeah. enough, and you can do a couple of things. I mean, I'm turning in a lot to Lars. Mm -hmm. I've done this a lot with people. I'll ask them just, like just to pop the back of their glasses so up, just down. slightly, just a teeny little bit, and that makes a huge difference. Yeah. You know, so. Totally. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> can you get an adapter for EF to PL? If yes, does it change anything negatively? The, the short answer is no. No. And the long answer is yes, but why would you? Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and so they don't, I mean, yeah, they don't really make it. Player one, so how do you know the camera has issues that point out it needs to be returned, especially if you have nothing to compare it to? So I was wondering if you're, your Ursa, because we've been saying that if, you're Ursa, if you get a good one, you're in good shape, but oh. if you get one that has problems, he's going, well, how do I know if I have problems? Yeah. That's when a good, it stops working. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll start looking at the footage going, what's that all about? Or why, yeah, really? it just isn't working. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard issues about Blackmagic stuff that sometimes, like, you'll have lines show up in, like, randomly. Uh, These aren't going to be things you won't sensor. notice. Yeah. You're going to be going, oh, man, that's not good. You know? And, you know, if, if it happens within the first year of the camera, obviously, you'll be able to talk yeah. to the manufacturer and get a new one. I'd get on the blogs if you're buying Nursa Mini, and I would find out what are all the problems people are having, and I would try to put my camera through some, uh, you know. Stress tests stress test and see if I'm going to get any of those issues when I first bought it. I would look for those issues. That's the thing that scares me the most about cameras is I don't want to be on set and now get something like your CFast card. That, yeah, the Lexar one. Yeah, yeah, that just, you don't want that. That's scary, man. We were fortunate that it was only like 20 clips and that eventually our DIT was able to pull them off, but still the card's bricked. Like, we can't use it. Yeah, there you go. All right, simple corporate headshots. Elaine said, this definitely isn't simple. When you have four people sitting, setting up, it's not simple. JP. We didn't have four people setting up. It was me and me. and uh, I think I had one other person helping me. Yeah, yeah. Was you there. were uh, Lars was there just do just, the just BTS. Doing BTS, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So it's two people. That's not uncommon. You do corporate things to have a, a one person helping you. Yeah, man. It's pretty. That's pretty standard yeah, setup. Yeah, but we have uh, five lights going. <laughs> that's not very simple. Come on, JP. <laughs> give the people what they want. <laughs> I can't, can't, I can't give you an amazing lighting <laughs> setup always with one light. Sometimes. Sometimes you have. Sometimes. Yeah. Jan Jacobson, what kind of lob mic does he use? I would kill for that kind of audio out on in the environment. We're just using a San... Sennheiser. Heiser. Sennheiser. And I can't remember. Is it the A6? I can never remember the number on the thing. It's the EW Yeah, EW Series. It's $600. EW3. Get a B&H for $600. And I just bought another one. They're fabulous. They're just really workhorse uh, lobs. Mm -hmm. You can run that back to your C300. You can run it back to a Zoom recorder or a Tascam. Although I, I lately, am in, I'm super in love with the Rode wireless mic. Uh, 400 bucks, so it's like $200 cheaper. And it, uh, and it uses 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless instead of radio wireless. And so it, uh, and it automatically switches channels if you're having uh, frequency issues. So, I don't know. And that it's, would and be I, a great like thing to the test. Sound, the sound is yeah. very, very great on those mics. So, but anyway. Okay. Is that Michael? Shettle. Shettle. Isn't pretty much the same effect accomplished using a grid, or are the their effects accomplished by a feathering that can't be done by using a grid? You know, the, the grid does a, not exactly the same thing. I, what I talked about in this lesson is that Remember. I will take a softbox and pan it away right. and up. Mm -hmm. And that does the same thing as a grid in that it takes the corner of the area of coverage and just starts to pull it onto our person. We've taken it away from the left side of the shot. We've taken it from the ground by pointing it up and away. You get the same look with a grid. Absolutely it's a lot easier with a grid, quite frankly. Um, the problem, a grid really will take all the light away from the walls. And so if you want there still to be an ambient with the light going on, you can start to feather and get that desired look and still have some ambient light filling in the space. But a grid is just going to focus that thing pretty deep. So if you pan a grid off a little bit, there's just nothing there. Yeah. And so... But that's, but yeah. the, that's the beauty of a grid. You yeah, exactly. It's right there. Oh, totally. The advantage and disadvantage sure. uh, of uh, pan of feathering is that if you got a ceiling or something, you're throwing all that light in the room, you're now creating a fill. Light. You right. know, whereas Still with a grid, light, yeah. It's your key light, and it's not doing anything else. Right. So sometimes that's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes I'm going, you know what, pull that grid off from there, pan up towards the ceiling, let's open the room up a little bit. Totally. You know, totally. so you can use one light, your key light, becomes two lights, becomes a key light, and becomes a fill light. So Great. All right, we did it. So we, we did it. We got it through all of them here. And I butchered only a few hundred of the names. <laughs> I mean, it's whatever. There you go. So there you have it. Uh, questions from Photo Video Trends uh, for the month of September. Thanks so much for sticking around, you guys. Listen to yeah. our podcast, too, if you're on the road or anything. Absolutely. Get it on the podcast. Uh, don't forget, go to the slamlands.com. We've got a lot of great things there. 
You can buy any products we've talked about with our affiliate program. That's really the way to support us. Get on there and purchase through the affiliate program. Even if you buy diapers on there, you can. Uh, it will help to uh, sponsor our show, Photo Video Trends. Well, so. If you think our show is boring, give us a shout out. <laughs> boring. Boring, boring, boring. Boring, boring, <laughs> boring. What are these trends anyway? <laughs> boring. There's no trends here. <laughs> it's just boring. That's the only trend I see. Uh, this show trends towards boring. Yeah. <laughs> so keep those cows rolling. And keep on clicking. I love the business coaching class that I do each month with all the students who have come and joined with us. I want you to understand the material there and get introduced to them. So on September 28th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to do a free call. I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to talk about in that class. More importantly, I'm going to introduce you to the daily routine for success. That formula will really help you grow your business. So join us September 28th at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Join us on that free call to see what we're doing. <laughs> I completely forgot. Forgot to blink. Well, who thinks about blinking? Nobody. That's the point about blinking. <laughs>